Hey everyone, and welcome to our Wild Hearts guide for the extremely powerful and agile ranged weapon, the bow. In this helpful video guide, we'll go over the things that you'll want to know to get to grips with this unique but super powerful and maneuverable weapon. We'll cover the overall way that the weapon works, the notable moves and Karakuri synergies, notable combos to get you straight into hunting, as well as the skills to look out for on your weapon and armor set. Our goal with this guide is to get you all up to speed with the weapon, so you know how to use it and can go out hunting as soon as possible. We hope to do more of these weapon guides for you coming soon, so tell us in the comments down below which weapon do you want to guide for next, and make sure to let us know if you're enjoying this type of video by clicking like down below and subscribing so you don't miss out on the next one. The bow is your go-to pick if you prefer weapons that specialize in ranged combat while still remaining highly mobile and dishing out huge amounts of burst damage. So let's start it off with a weapon overview. Your overall goal while hunting will revolve around Around setting up and then detonating your target for huge damage. Your general flow for the weapon will involve switching between your horizontal higher stance and vertical Atoya stance. You'll be peppering your target with multiple rapid shooting arrows from the horizontal stance, and with each shot you'll be lodging arrows into your target. You can even use your stamina to temporarily strengthen your bow for more rapid attacks. After the target is then primed with plenty of lodged arrows, you can now take advantage of the vertical stance to charge and lose powerful hard hitting arrows. This will also explode the lodged arrows for additional damage damage often toppling or even breaking parts off of the monster in the process. So if managing your stamina, positioning, aim and then setting up your target for powerful payoffs sounds like your thing, then the bow is definitely one for you. Next, let's go over your core moves and how they work. We're using an Xbox controller, so we'll be demonstrating using these button prompts, but you can easily convert these by knowing that X is your attack 1 and Y is your attack 2. To start with, we have your standard attack 1 input, which will switch you between horizontal and vertical stance. We'll begin by explaining the horizontal stance stance, and in this stance, each of your arrows will lodge into the target. You can lodge a seamlessly endless amount of arrows into a target, but they will start to expire after a short while or once detonated. While in the horizontal stance, you can use RT to shoot. Holding the trigger or pressing it rapidly will both begin a three combo string that will start with shooting one arrow, then two, and finally three before resetting back to one. This will drain your stamina slowly and will require some stamina to shoot more than the standard single shot. You can also move while shooting, so you have that too. Then comes the unique mechanic of the bow, the bolster charges. Using attack 2 will bolster your bow with one charge. Once charged, you can actually swap stance and keep the charge, but for now we're sticking to the horizontal stance. Bolster charge level 1 will execute a burst shot that will continuously fire fast arrows as it drains your stamina, but it will stop after a short while. You can also dodge with B while you're doing this if you have the stamina, and move while firing. This is a great way to lodge many arrows into your target. Next, by using attack 2 twice in a row, you will bolster your bow with two charges. This this will allow you to execute a volley or rain of arrows in an arc. You can manually control the aim with the right analog stick. This will continuously drain your stamina, and you'll keep firing until you completely run out of stamina or end the input. You can also dodge with B while doing this if you have enough stamina. This is once again a fantastic way to lodge many arrows into your target if you can land the hits. Through all of these attacks, your target will be primed with lots of lodged arrows, and this leads us into the vertical stance, where these moves will explode the lodged arrows for huge burst damage. Firing with right trigger will lose a stronger arrow, but it doesn't do anything special without charging it. Holding right trigger will build charge up to two levels. Each level will increase the damage of the arrow and the explosion of the lodged arrows, so more charge is generally better. You can also move while charging this, which is extra helpful. Using attack 2 will bolster your bow with one charge, and shooting this will execute a piercing arrow with a multi-stage hit. You can hold this down to correct your aim, but it will also drain your stamina. You can also dodge while doing this if you need to reposition. Landing this attack will also detonate lodged arrows for high burst damage. But next, by using attack 2 twice in a row, you will bolster your bow with two charges that will allow you to do the resonant shot. This will require a short draw of your bow, and you will be temporarily stuck in place in this pose. Interestingly, you cannot dodge while doing this one. Your stamina regeneration will pause while executing this attack, but it will lead to your most powerful single shot that will also detonate the lodged arrows for even higher burst damage. This is your strongest finisher. Additionally, you have your A input to jump. This can be used before shooting and leads into a jumping shot or a spring, which is your melee attack with your bow. But these aren't very powerful, so we won't recommend using these very often. Next, let's go over your Karakuri moves, because some of these massively impact the weapon and your finishers. It's important to note that the Karakuri moves have set attacks regardless of what stance you're in, and you will end those attacks in whatever stance you started before using the Karakuri. Jumping off of a crate will bounce you into the air. After this, inputting any attack will execute a shockwave move that creates an explosion which will also detonate any lodged arrows. Using two crates will execute the same shockwave move, but after landing you will have a level 1 bolster charge. 
Using three crates will give you an automatic level two bolster charge, which again can be used for either vertical or horizontal stance. Using a torch will buff your bow with flames. However, using two torches will give you the buff and allow for a follow-up input to execute the same shockwave attack as mentioned previously that creates an explosion and detonates any lodged arrows. Jumping off of three torches will do the same as before, except upon landing, you will also get a free level one bolster charge, which again can be used for either stance. Using a spring will propel you forwards and inputting any attack will execute an arc shot, which is an instant multi-shot of five arrows to lodge into your target. Landing will also give you an automatic level one bolster charge, which can be used for either horizontal or vertical stance. Using a glider will allow for any attack input to execute the same shockwave attack as mentioned previously, except landing will give you an automatic level two bolster charge. Using a celestial anchor will allow you to dash forwards to your target and attacking will once again execute the same shockwave attack and as mentioned before, will instantly give you an automatic level two bolster charge once again. Using the stake while airborne or stowed on the ground will shoot a projectile which if connecting to the target will fly you or surf you towards the target. Once reaching the target, the stake will lodge itself into the enemy. This creates a jump point and you will automatically be jumped off after this. When doing any attack input after this, you will execute the same shockwave attack mentioned previously and landing will give you an automatic level one bolster charge. So next let's go over our Karakuri and combo recommendations. Let's start with the Karakuri. The Celestial Anchor and Glider give you extra mobility and an instant way to detonate lodged arrows and give you two levels of bolster charge after landing. The crate also offers the same benefit as before, but gives you a high position to stand on or to fuse into a bulwark, which is also very useful for positioning. The springs are a great way to quickly lodge five arrows into your target with the follow-up attack. You'll also get that level one charge, which can be used for burst shot in horizontal stance, so that's really good too. For this reason, these four Karakuri are what we recommend always bringing into your hunts with the bow. Now let's talk about some combos that you can do. The horizontal bolster charge one burst shot is a very good move, but has a little bit of end lag, and you can actually cancel this by using an additional bolster charge input towards the end of the combo. This can be looped until you run out of stamina, and because you can swap stances after bolstering, you can actually switch into vertical stance after bursting for an easy way to detonate your target. Another combo you can do is to start in horizontal stance. From here, you can use a spring and a attack to lodge five arrows into your target. Because in horizontal stance, you can use the free bolster charge one to burst and lodge more arrows into your target. This is a great and fast combo to lodge many arrows into your target, which can be followed up by any vertical charge attack or Karakuri shockwave finisher to detonate them. Another great combo is to start in horizontal stance and use the glider. This will allow you to do the shockwave finisher. However, upon landing, you're going to get that instant level two bolster charge. So you can immediately go into a volley and lodge a ton of arrows into your target very quickly. The glider will then fall back onto the ground where you jumped off of it and that can be used again to loop this. You then use the shockwave finisher to detonate all of those previously lodged arrows in your target and then land to give you another level two bolster charge to go into volley once again. The volley will lodge more arrows into your target then you pick up the glider again to detonate them and repeat the process. This can be looped over and over and requires minimal Karakuri thread because the glider is also reusable. This is a super powerful move on larger monsters and in co-op while the monster is distracted. Next let's go over some skills to synergize with your bow. Keep an eye out for these skills to inherit on your weapon. The deep arrow skill will increase the time that higher arrows hold so they can stay lodged for longer. The speed shooter increases the number of shots fired in a single fortified rapid higher burst, which will just improve your bursts overall. Broken Beast Screaming Arrow will boost the power of resonant Atoya attacks when the bow is at maximum enhancement. This will make your burst damage even higher. The Able Archer skill will increase the number of shots at the end of a higher volley. Since you can use this a lot with the glider combo, this will be very good too. And Savage to increase your attack is another great one all around. While on your armor, once again, Savage will be good here because that will further increase your attack. But Core Boost is also fantastic as managing your stamina is an important part of the bow. And since this increases your maximum stamina, it's very helpful. Sleight of Hand Fury will boost your attack for a while after conjuring a Karakuri. And this is going to be quite nice because you're going to be using Karakuri a lot for your different combos and detonations. So if you did find this video helpful, definitely click like to show support down below and subscribe so you don't miss out on all of the guides we have coming your way soon. If you did find this helpful, make sure to share to your friends who also want to learn the bow and comment which weapon should we do a guide on next. Thank you so much for watching and the two videos on screen now we think you'll really enjoy if you did enjoy this one. If you found this video helpful you're probably going to find these ones helpful too and then tell us what you think after watching in the comments down below.